So for tonight, I hope to leave you with four key things to take away. First, I hope that we can understand a little bit more about the nuances in the epidemiology and burden of cardiometabolic disease among age groups. And what do I mean by cardiometabolic disease? In this case, I refer to a group of related diseases such as heart attack, stroke, and diabetes that ultimately work together in order to lead to health disparities among different groups. In addition to that, I hope we can dive a little bit into the role of specific clinical, behavioral, demographic, and socioeconomic factors that contribute to differences in cardiometabolic risk among different Asian groups. Third, I hope that to discuss some new developments um, in the field to predict cardiometabolic disease risk, particularly among Asia groups. And finally, I hope to leave you with three action items to think about how can we together improve the health of Asian populations. So let's dive in into talking about cardiometabolic disease. Now, as you may know, diabetes um, is higher among Asia groups as compared to other race and ethnic groups. These are data from the 1999 to 2018 National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey. And if you look at the prevalence of diagnosed diabetes, otherwise diabetes that was diagnosed by a doctor, we could see that it's 13.7% nationally among Asian groups. That's higher as compared to the Hispanic individuals, non-Hispanic Black, and non-Hispanic white people. Now, this wouldn't be a talk about Asian American health unless I discuss the heterogeneity that exists within the Asian American population. Specifically among Filipino groups, Filipino groups experience a higher prevalence of diabetes as compared to other um, Asian ethnic groups. However, we can see that it's actually lower among some Asian um, ethnic groups, and particularly Korean, about 4.7% of all Korean individuals experience diabetes. This heterogeneity also expands into heart disease, in particular, ischemic heart disease. Now, overall, from 2003 to 2017, the rate of mortality due to heart disease has been generally decreasing across all age groups, as you can see in this dotted black line for both men on the left and women on the right. However, there's a large differences in terms of the changes in heart disease over time with particular groups. I want to specifically highlight the groups in blue and groups in green, which represent Filipino Americans and Asian Indian people respectively. You can see that in general for men, that these rates are declining very slightly. However, it's still higher relative to the general Asian population. So in general, what I really want to talk about is we have a lot of um, nationally representative studies through our national data sets, in addition to vital statistics, that ultimately try to track the epidemiology of um, Asian individuals around the United States. However, we also need to be conscious that there actually have been efforts in the past 10 years to oversample Asian individuals. So while there might be systematic differences bet between surveys for a single race group, disparities may not necessarily contrast with respect to certain groups. <laughs> Ultimately, what can we take away from this? Well, perhaps there might be particular issues in the ways they are sampled. Um, perhaps different Asian ethnic groups might be sampled differently, hence the differences in terms of the prevalence of heart attack. Um, also, in addition to that, because we're using public data, we might not actually know which Asian groups were sampled in this case. But generally, what we can say is that our national data sets are pretty consistent in terms of calculating the prevalence, prevalence for our cardiometabolic disease outcomes. However, there may be some discrepancies with respect to certain health outcomes for certain groups. And as I've shown you before, I've only looked specifically at aggregated Asian groups. So the bigger question we have to ask ourselves and how to expand this work is how consistent are these national estimates among disaggregated Asian groups? So knowing that there's an issue with disaggregation, what we might wanna also consider is what are some potential new groups we have to consider in the growth and the change, changes of the Asian American population? And here I would like to focus on some work that I've done with electronic health record data for the cardiovascular vascular disease among Asians and Pacific Islander studies. Now, with respect to multiracial people here in the United States, about one in five Asian people identify as, a, as multiple races. So for, for example, being Asian and white or Asian and black. However, in comparison for the Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander population, over 50%, nearly 60% of um, Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander people identify as multiple race groups. Now, with respect to our survey data, unfortunately for our public use survey data, it's hard to get 
um, data on disaggregated age groups. What you're seeing right here is an example of the sample sizes of different race groups within our within the 2018 NHIS. Now, as of 20, um, 2022, we're only able to look at disaggregated Asian groups up through the 2018 NHIS. When you can see right here that the sample sizes for these groups are pretty small, about a thousand people for Asian Indian Filipino and a little less than a thousand people for Chinese. Japanese and Korean individuals, which comprise the fourth and fifth largest Asian groups, aren't even available in public data. In fact, they're probably grouped in the other Asian group, which accounts for 1,400 individuals. If you're trying to find data on Native Hawaiian people or Pacific Islander people, it's hard to find it in public use data. So the question is, is if I want to study these communities, how can I um, get better access to data? Well, one way we can get better access to data is by collaborating with healthcare systems and using electronic health records, which have thousands upon thousands of individuals of different and multicultural racial backgrounds. This is the power of um, electronic health records is that we can look at more people and really get granular. We can see that overwhelmingly Pacific Islander and Asian, Asian individuals, Asian and white and multiple race individuals all have higher prevalence of stroke as compared to the non-Hispanic white population. And more importantly, if we think about other related factors such as obesity, um, we can see that here, um, multiracial groups also have a high prevalence of obesity when we use um, a BMI cutoff at 30 in comparison to the rest of the um, a multiple race groups. This red bar right here represents the proportion of people who are just normal weight among um, um, non-Hispanic white people. But you can see here in the blue bars, which represent different classes of obesity, we can see that they are far bigger as compared to some of the single race Asian groups and also some of the Pacific Islander groups. And these trends where there's higher obesity among um, multiracial groups continues to stay persistent even after we count for socio-demographic factors, socio-economic factors, and health behaviors. So ultimately, what can we take away um, from this? Well, first, it's that electronic health records in light of the lack of data from national health surveys can provide us with good data to understand not only health of aggregated um, groups, but also disaggregated single race and multiracial Asian and Pacific Islander groups. For our Asian groups, single race Asian groups appear to be healthier with respect to cardiovascular disease and obesity compared to the non-Hispanic white population. However, as the US becomes becomes more multiracial, we might be missing out on key health disparities for multiracial Asian Pacific Island groups, who in this case appear less healthy as compared to non-Hispanic white people. And ultimately, this provides us with some new opportunities to really ask the question, how can we better address the increased risk of cardiometabolic disease among multiracial and Asian Pacific Islander populations? So one way we can think about this is about really contextualizing um, cardiometabolic disease among Asian people, specifically looking at what are those individual level contributors to cardiometabolic disease. So similar to how we think about um, cardiometabolic disease and the heterogeneity that exists within cardiometabolic disease, we know that there's actually a lot of differences with respect to Asian groups based on socioeconomic status. In particular, when we think about health, we're often focused here on the individual level factors, thinking about how our individual level biological factors, our behaviors, our individual physical and built environment, our experiences with the healthcare system and our sociocultural environment ultimately affect health. But it's important for us to acknowledge the fact that um, there are other factors that affect health, which are removed of the, of, their, of their individual experience, such as our interpersonal connections with other people, our communities that we live in, and ultimately the societies and policies that ultimately shape our experiences with health. However, our data are limited. Oftentimes we focus just on the individual level, which is what I'll focus on tonight in terms of thinking about what is that explained difference in cardiovascular disease as well as mortality among Asian individuals. In general, among all Asian individuals, demographic factors such as age and sex only explain about 7% of the difference in prevalent cardiovascular disease um, among these groups. But you can see here that there's actually a lot of heterogeneity with respect to groups. You can see for Chinese individuals, it's a little lower at 4%, whereas among Filipino and Asian Indian people, it's much higher around 8% for Filipino people, as well as Asian Indian people. Now, if we think about the confluence of all the outcome, all factors together, 
we can see that, th yes, as we account for more things such as health behaviors like smoking, like um, uh, physical activity, um, in addition to health conditions such as having comorbid diabetes, um, hypertension and depression, as well as socioeconomic factors such as education attainment, um, experiences with poverty, we can see that in general among all Asian people, it accounts for about 11%, which sounds pretty low. And if you think about it, if we only are accounting for 11% of all explained variants in cardiovascular disease, that means we have another 89% of, of factors that we don't know about. Again, these are only individual level factors, things that we individually experience. So we have a whole 89% that we still need to explain. And again, this, this amount of explained variance differs between groups. It's as low as 9% among Chinese individuals, but as high as 13% among Filipino. We can also think about how individual um, domains of factors also um, influence health, such as focusing for Filipino people. If we look at Filipino people, we could see that demographic factors plus health conditions like diabetes um, and hypertension account for about 11% of the variance um, for Filipino people. However, for Asian Indian people, it seems like the factor that matters the most are health behaviors, such as smoking, sleep, um, and physical activity. Ultimately, what can we say about this? Well, first we can say that individual level factors um, explain a modest proportion of the variance variants in cardiovascular disease among Asian people. Demographic factors such as age and sex um, contribute the most in terms of the greatest explained variants. However, there's ultimately some differences with respect to the contributions of various domains. For example, health conditions contribute more to differences in cardiovascular health among Filipino people, while health behaviors contribute more to Asian Indian people. Ultimately, this is important because as we think for future clinicians and we think about interventions, Perhaps for Filipino people, our focus needs to be on the individual health conditions, such as the higher prevalence of diabetes among Filipino people. Whereas for Asian Indian people, we might want to consider focusing on individual health behaviors, such as sleep or diet and as well. So I also like to expand this work to thinking about how much of this variance explains mortality. So I talked a little bit about prevalence, but now let's talk a little bit about how much it explains for mortality. So with respect to um, mortality, we can we can see here that age alone, just age, accounts for about 38% of differences in mortality of all-cause mortality and about 29% with respect to cardiovascular mortality. Again, a very sizable proportion. And it also kind of makes sense as we think about it as individuals get older, um, they have a higher likelihood of experiencing mortality, but also we have, still have to consider as well is that there's a higher likelihood of having cardiometabolic diseases as well as other outcomes in addition to health behaviors such as diet, exercise, and sleep. You can see here is that age plus these standard modifiable risk factors accounts for about 45% of all-cause mortality and about 36% of cardiovascular disease mortality. If we look at just age plus health behaviors, this accounts for about 40, 40.7%, 41% for all-cause mortality and about 32% for cardiovascular disease mortality. Now, if we take think about all of these individual factors, such as demographic factors like sex and race, socioeconomic factors, biological factors such as people's hemoglobin A1C, their cholesterol levels, um, lipoproteins, the medications they take. Ultimately, we're only explaining about half of the difference um, in uh, all-cause mortality and half of the difference in cardiovascular disease mortality. In other words, we still have a whole set of variants that we have left to explain. In other words, there are other factors out there that we can't account for at the individual level that ultimately can influence health in this case. Now, again, while we can't change things like age, we can change things like our health behaviors. Ultimately, what can we really say about um, the explained variants or what factors contribute to our health and cardiometabolic health? Well, first of all, we could say that age alone explains nearly one third of the variance and the difference in all cause and cardiovascular disease mortality. Ultimately, this mortality can also be improved by modifying on different health factors. And finally, about 50% of all of the variants in all-cause mortality and cardiovascular disease mortality can really be explained by these individual level demographic, socioeconomic, health behavior, and health outcomes. This ultimately leads me back to this model. 
again, we've talked about 50% of all mortality. 50% of all mortality can be accounted for by these individual units. So you're probably asking, where does the other 50% come from? Well, the other 50%, I hypothesize, really comes from the confluence of different interpersonal factors, community level factors, and society level factors that ultimately underlie differences in the cardiometabolic health. So finally, I want to leave us with talking about some discussions about predicting cardiometabolic health, um, the third part of the talk, and thinking about pathways to move forward. So as of November 2023, there is a new cardiovascular disease risk prediction equation um, with respect to um, health, otherwise known as the predicting risk of cardiovascular disease events, the PREVENT online calculator. Now, prior to focusing on PREVENT, our old way of doing things was with the, the pool cohort equations which included a lot of the same factors, but also included ish, um, um, race. And with respect to, to race, the pool cohort equations had a separate equation for um, black individuals and a separate equation for white individuals. And that really begged the question, well, how do Asian people do this? Well, some previous work by Fatima Rodriguez found that with respect to Asian individuals, as well as Hispanic individuals, the pool cohort equations tended to overestimate um, the risk among these groups. In other words, it wasn't consistent across and it wasn't calibrated. So the prevent equations themselves were created in order to address these issues of over calibration and under calibration, whether or not individuals use statin, um, body mass index, urinary albumin to creatinine ratio, even globin A1C, again, a marker of diabetes. And ultimately to get rid of this idea of biological essentialism and using race um, as a key factor that predicts um, cardiovascular disease, we're trying to think about more importantly, the social factors that ultimately um, differences in cardiovascular disease by race, such as using the area level deprivation index. So with this, I wanna leave you with some final key takeaways. First, multiracial Asian Pacific Islander groups experience increased risk of cardiovascular disease and obesity when compared to single race, Asian and non-Hispanic groups. Second, social and health factors have a meaningful contribution and explain the burden of cardiometabolic disease among Asian groups. And finally, as the Asian and Pacific Islander populations diversify, there's a need um, for new prediction models to account for these diversifying populations. And with that, let me leave you with three calls to action. What can we do to improve Asian and Pacific Islander health? The first thing I want to emphasize is the importance of advocacy. Again, there is no story if there are no data. I really wanna call upon you all to advocate with your legislators to more intentionally collect data on disaggregated Asian Pacific Islander groups, but also make these data um, available for public use. Armand Jamal and his colleagues really highlighted some of these issues with respect to the availability of um, public use data, especially with respect to um, the different racial and ethnic groups. In addition to that, I want our stories to be known. So I wanna encourage you all to participate in clinical trials to increase the representation of Asian Pacific Islander people, especially those from less represented groups. Now, in particularly here at Stanford, we have a new cohort called the ARISE cohort, which aims to enroll 2,100 Asian Pacific Islander individuals in order to better understand the cardiovascular health among Asian Pacific Islander people. This is gonna going to be part of a 10,000 person cohort essentially very similar to the Framingham Heart Study to ultimately understand the individual and social factors that ultimately lead to differences in cardiovascular disease health. Now, if you're not here at Stanford, I wanna encourage you to look at other recruitment sites such as the University of Washington, University of Hawaii, and New York University as well. And finally, let's initiate and maintain health habits such as exercise, healthy eating, and um, lack of smoking and tobacco.